Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course of Reasoning and Logic. In this one, we're going to take a look at how you can create truth tables for compound propositions. In other words, propositions with more than one connective. Now, as you might have already noticed, this video is rather long, and that's because we're going to take a look at two different uh, pro compound propositions. The first one is being written down now. And for both of them, we're going to take a look at two different methods to create truth tables for these. So if after the first example you think, I got this, feel free to stop the video early. Or if you only want to see the slightly more complex example, skip ahead a bit to find where we start the second one. Now without further ado, let's start. So for our proposition, we're going to take P implies Q or P. And let's start with option one. Option one has us start by creating columns for the different literals or the different variables, if you will, P and Q in this case, and write down all the different values for P and Q. And now we write down the full proposition P implies Q or P again. And we start now by copying the values of the literals below every single one of their occurrences. So P implies Q contains P and Q, and we write down the values of P and Q below them. And also we have or p, so again we copy down the values of p. Now we take it one connective at a time. We start with the implication, as it's between the parentheses, so we need to do it first. And what do we need to do? Well, these two values are already there, so 0 implies 0 is 1, 0 implies 1 is 1, 1 implies 0 is 0, and 1 implies 1 is 1. Having done this, we can now focus on the OR, and for the OR, we need to compare the value of this implication and the value of P. So this 1 and this 0 for the first row, which make 1, the 1 and the 0 for the second row, which also make 1, and so on and so forth. Our conclusion, this proposition is always true. This compound proposition is a tautology. Unfortunately, we have created five columns, all filled with numbers now. So, to help the reader understand what the final answer is in this truth table, you should clearly indicate it. You can either do this by marking it, or you can do this by circling it, which is what we will do in this video. Now let's see if option two nets us the same result. For option two, we again start with the two columns for P and Q and write down all of their values beneath it. But now rather than writing down the full, full compound proposition, we take it one connective at a time. We start with P implies Q. Hopefully you know by now that the true values for that are 1, 1, 0, 1. Now, for the rest of this uh, truth table, we're going to call P implies Q A, which means that the next thing we're going to look at is A or P. This is the OR we still need to do. And now we know which columns to look at. The A column, so P implies Q, which has a 1 for the first row, and the P column, which has a 0 for the first row. We OR them and we get 1. Second row, same thing, and we continue and continue. And fortunately, we see that in this case, we also get to the same conclusion. The compound proposition is a tautology. I always prefer it if you also write down that the last column is your final answer when you use option number two. But as it is the rightmost column now, and we write from left to right, I can understand that the rightmost column is the column I should be looking at. So when you use option two, it is less critical, but still desirable to write down which column is your final answer. Okay, let's take a look at one more example. For this example, the compound proposition is going to be a little bit more complex. We're going to take P implies Q or R implies Q, and we're going to negate this whole thing. So now that we have three variables, P, Q, and R, we will have eight rows. There we go. First, I'm going to write down the full compound proposition again. There we go. And then for every literal, 
I'm going to write down their values, P, Q, R, and another Q. And when we have eight rows, I often find that as I write down these numbers, they get a bit misaligned. So to this end, what I like to do is I like to add an extra horizontal line separating the top and bottom half of the truth table. Okay, let's take a look at the first collective. P implies Q. Here we go. Now R implies Q. Okay, now that we have the implications, we can take a look at the OR. For the OR, we should compare the two values of the implications. So for the first row, this one and this one, and one and one equals one, and so on and so forth. We do this for all rows. We find one zero in the sixth row, but all of the other values are one. And now we simply need to negate this to get to our final answer. And remember, it's our final answer, so we should indicate it as such. For instance, by circling the whole column. Okay, let's take a look at option two. Again, three columns, P, Q, and R, eight rows, and again, a horizontal line to help me separate the top and the bottom half. And now we're first going to take a look at P implies Q, because remember option two takes this one connective at a time, starting with P implies Q. Here we go, four ones, two zeros, and two more ones. Now we're going to take a look at R implies Q. And now remember that R implies Q has R on the left side, but our truth table has R on the right side. So make sure you take careful notice of which way around you should read the implication. Here we go. Now let's call P implies QA, let's call R implies QB, and then the OR becomes A or B. So these previous two columns, those are the ones we need to OR. And we see that again, we have ones everywhere except in the sixth row. And now the final thing we need to do is we need to negate this A or B, and voila, we get to the same answer as we had with option number one all zeros except the one in the sixth row, meaning this compound proposition is a contingency. All right, there you have it, two different compound propositions and two different options to create truth tables for each of them. Now, for the course reasoning and logic, we don't really mind which one you use, so long as you use it correctly and all, it's always clear where we can find your final answer. And with that, We've come to the end of this pencast. See you around for the next one.